Dr. Vicki Peterson here. I wanted to talk to you today about a new interview that came out recently in a magazine from Dr. Fasano. Dr. Fasano, as you may know, is one of the leading researchers in our country. Uh, he works out of the University of Maryland and uh, is really leading the way in the area of celiac disease. In this recent interview, he made a very bold statement in his um, lovely style, which is a warm style, which he has a great sense of humor. But here's what he said, which is going to have a huge impact on uh, the celiac and, and gluten sensitive population. And that is that the biopsy, the intestinal biopsy, he says, is no longer the gold standard and should no longer be the gold standard for diagnosing celiac disease. I've been saying that for a long time, but Dr. Fasano is extremely well known. He is a researcher day in and day out and is an amazing human being. Personally, I love it when people can change their mind. Uh, he says in this article, I said that biopsies were the gold standard. I was wrong. I'm changing my mind. And uh, I, I really respect someone who can do that. None of us are perfect especially in this ever-changing field of clinical nutrition, not to mention the dramatic changes we're seeing in the area of celiac and gluten sensitive research. You've got to be able to change your mind, I think, because uh, the data requires it. Uh, in his wonderful sense of humor, he said, uh, it's not only not the gold standard, the biopsy, but it's he says, I don't even think it's silver or bronze. He goes, maybe copper, which is, of course, a cute way of saying that it's hierarchy, the importance of the intestinal biopsy as the only step, the, 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 the diagnostic criteria that must be there, that so many gastroenterologists say in this country, is no longer the case, in his opinion. And his opinion has a lot of weight. So. Uh, this is important to realize. Let's step back for a second and look at our, the percentage that we achieve the job of diagnosing celiacs. We do it 5% of the time. Approximately 5% of our celiacs we diagnose. That means 95% of the time we miss the boat. I ask you, if you were doing a job, if you were doing your job 5% effectively, how long would you have your job? If anybody around you was doing something 5% of the time that they were supposed to be doing it, how impressed would you be? Not very, obviously. So we are missing something, and this is a good first step, noting that the biopsy is not the sole criteria, because we're missing so many people who are ill, who know they do better off gluten, but are, but are being told erroneously, no, you're fine because your biopsy was negative. So this is a good first step. Dr. Fasano in this interview uh, also mentions that uh, two to three percent of the time people are absolutely celiacs. They do have a positive biopsy, uh, vil extreme villus atrophy, uh, but they do not have the gene. So he's bringing up the fact that uh, there are other genes that code for celiac disease. They're doing a lot of research finding genes for gluten sensitivity. Just appreciate this is a very evolving area. We, there's a lot we have to learn. A lot of data we have to gather still. It's not cut and dry. Biopsy yes, biopsy no, clean. No, not anywhere close. And what I'm about, not as a researcher, but as a clinician, as an educator, is I don't want anyone who's suffering from the negative effects of gluten to continue to suffer. Because what we do know is it increases your mor mortality rate. You will die more often from most diseases if you have celiac or gluten intolerance. We know that. Uh, they did a study on family members with celiac and those without. So let's say you're celiac and you have a brother who is non-celiac. At any given age, you were, according to the study, twice as likely to die from a disease than your brother. So when you hit age 20, 
you and your brother, even though he was older or younger, doesn't matter. But at age 20, you would be twice as likely to die from any disease as your brother. Age 50, age 60, it didn't matter the disease. It was just comparing the two of you, one was celiac, one not. And they did this in families, so they had the same, you know, kind of genetic predispositions in the family. But what was beautiful about this study is that when that person followed a gluten-free diet and really healed up, they were then half as likely to die as their brother at any given age. That's pretty impressive. So my point here, it's not a new one, but I'm going to continue to keep making it, is we have a long way to go in a nice clean test. Dr. Fasano says in this article that um, we don't miss diabetes anymore. You know, we don't miss MS anymore. I'm not sure I totally agree about the MS. I think people wait too long before they get that diagnosis. But his point was we have diagnostic tests that are pretty clean and clear for a lot of diseases and we don't then tend to miss them. So there's not 95% of the population with diabetes and we don't know it as an example. But with celiac, we have a long way to go. He also very much embraces the fact that gluten sensitivity is a problem that needs to be addressed. He sees it six and seven times more than he sees celiac in his research facility. So my takeaway here is yes, go get the test, get the blood test. If you want to get the biopsy, get the biopsy. But do realize there is no particular gold standard at this point. We don't have a single entity that when you do it, you absolutely know. Except this. Here's my personal gold standard. And it was mentioned by Dr. Fasano as a step, which is you remove gluten for 30 days and you feel better. Your body tells you it likes that. There is a gold standard. There is something you can hang on to. Because this is your body expressing to you. It's not a lab test that maybe is sensitive and maybe it isn't. And it's not somebody plucking a few pieces of your intestine to see if they've been degraded or not. It's your whole system because gluten affects the body in a myriad of ways. Largely digestive, largely neurological, but liver and heart and pretty much every system in your body. So do share this information. There's nothing dangerous about going off gluten for 30 days and seeing if you feel better. That is a very valid test. And soon I think there will be better tests and tests that will show that are supposedly on the horizon because a good friend of mine is about to release them, but on the horizon showing how your body is reacting to gluten. Is it neurological? Is it hard? Is it lung? Is it joint? These will be beautiful and supposedly they're really close. But today, we don't yet have them. So as of today, you can change your diet, see if you feel better, and that's a valid test. It's been lovely speaking with you. Please do share this with your friends and family. This is very important information, and it truly will save lives, and that is no exaggeration, because gluten is killing people at a young age needlessly. Until next time, I wish you very good health.